Good morning. It's good to be here. It's good to be in the, before the presence of the Lord. It's good to hear the brethren understand this walk with God. It's not really about us. It's about all of us. It's about each other. It's about loving one another. And by doing that, we bring praises to God. You see, I knew when I asked Brett to do the Sunday, I mean to do the Friday, Sundays will come later. Uh, <laughs> so he's shaking the head. <laughs> but I knew that it was going to be met with some resistance. I knew it. And uh, and it's like what Jamie just said here, you know, it's like, why? It's the word of the Lord. Why are we so hesitant to share that which is already written and puts in our hearts? You know, it's, it's just really no reason for, for us to be that way. But as human beings, we, we do. We do. We resist it. I resisted it. Uh, and sometimes still do when I get stubborn. I try not to. But we never do it. I'd never do it to try to one to overshadow the other because there's no overshadowing here. We're all one. We're one body. You know, there's, there's only one head, and that's Jesus Christ, the Savior. All of us are just members of the body. That's all we are. And at some point, the legs got to do a little bit of work. Or the arms got to do a little work. Whatever the case may be, we all have to fill our spot and learn and grow. This is how we do it, by stepping out of our comfort zone. When I first asked Brad, he was like, you can see it in his demeanor. He didn't say so many words, but his demeanor was like, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm not comfortable with that. I thought, you just think about it. I mean, I knew the time was right, but he had to know the time was right. See, that's the whole thing. We've got to remember that. See, Elijah went to Elisha. And he just threw the cloak over him. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I, I got things I need to do. I need to go see my parents. I got, I got this big field that we're getting ready for harvest and I didn't take the attitude of Elijah <laughs> Elijah said what am I about to do with you man you know I'm just obeying God if you don't want to do it that's not on me I, I did my part now it's up to you to do yours see it's a good thing that we don't take that attitude because <laughs> that can just of course if God tells you to take that attitude you got to take that attitude because maybe that person needs to be snapped into you know obedience so to speak but sure enough, as Elijah did that, Elisha went like, you know what? Let's sacrifice. What a, what a, what a switch. Let's sacrifice. You know, I'll kill the oxen that we're plowing with, and we'll use the cart to, to burn. So, so it's a big difference. We don't know what God has in store for us, but we must trust him. We must trust him. And that's the lesson that we're all learning all of us together is that we must trust the Lord sometimes things don't look right don't worry you must trust the Lord put your faith in in Christ Jesus put your faith in God because he's the only one that can deliver we go to doctors some people go to psychologists some people go the world route and that's whatever I'm not saying I gotta go to the doctor I go to the doctor but Ultimately, you got to trust the Lord. He is the one in charge, even over the doctors, if you will. So, boy, this message is going to be difficult to share because I'm not used to jumping around scriptures. I got like four or five scriptures. I've been doing a lot of digging this whole week. And I had to write myself this thing here on top. It says, do it in love. 
<laughs> yeah. I already got a comment back there. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I already got a comment. Okay. Okay. I get it. Uh, I have to do it in love. Uh, as I share with you guys, uh, I've been meditating all this week real hard for whatever reason to the point that Rosemary. asked me several times during the week, are you okay? Because, and there's nothing physical here, just I've been meditating on the ones I love. By the ones I love, yes, I love my wife and my children, but I love you guys. You guys are very important to me, each one of you, even the ones that are not here. They're important to me. Harold's important to me. Deborah's important to me. Others are just as important to me. So you know, then I pray. But as I've been meditating, as I've been examining myself and contemplating on the, I don't even want to call them trials, but the roads that we take, as I contemplate on that, I, I see where a lot of man-made ways have crept into our walk with God and our faith. All you got to do is stand back and analyze a little bit. And a lot of it derives from religion. <sighs> Satan uses religion against God's people more than anything else. Anything to get you away from the true faith. He's going to use it. I'm going to say it again, like I said it many times. He is not going to walk through those doors dressed in red, carrying a pitchfork instead of a Bible. No. He, he'll, he'll have a Bible. Matter of fact, he can quote it pretty well. We got proof of that in the scriptures. He quoted it to Jesus. He's been living under those rules since creation he can't escape it either he wants to but he can't that's the whole thing so I say and you'll pray for me on this one here because I really want to do it in love God help me I hear so much stuff that is fake out there and I go why are they falling for this right here over and over and over and listen I'm not pointing out to any one person I'm pointing to all of them how is that I'm pointing to all of them name it and claim it where is that show me chapter and verse I'll go with you confess 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 that you're not sick. But I am sick. So uh, if I'm confessing that I'm not sick, am I not confessing a lie? Because I am sick. Am I lying to myself? Am I lying to my brothers and sisters? And most importantly, am I stupid enough to think I can lie to God? Confess you're walking in victory. I can't even pay my bills. You're not supposed to live in poverty. Send us a thousand dollars. We'll show you. God will show you. And some of these people just do it. Out of their need, they're sending the money. Don't do that here. May I become a curse if I ever ask you for money other than out of need for the church or for the people of Haiti or for somebody else. I don't understand where they're going. I don't understand how long they think they can deceive God. I don't think they really think they can deceive God. They're just enriching themselves. What do they do with certain scriptures? I have no idea. John 16, verse 33. J 
Jesus speaking. And don't go there because I didn't go there. It's just top of the head here. And he says, in this world, you will have tribulation. Well, you're not supposed to be under any kind of tribulation. Well, that's a lie because the Lord Savior himself said that we will. But everything is going to be okay. If you trust Jesus, because he said that I have overcome the world. If you don't trust Jesus, if you trust in your own ability, you're in trouble. You're in a lot of trouble, and the world's going to keep coming after you. My throat hurts, but I'm going to try to be good to it. I got some examples that the Lord showed me through the week that totally, totally destroys all that nonsense out there, if you will. Now, we can either buckle up, tighten our belts, and say, here we go, Lord, we want to do it your way. Or you have an option. You can keep doing it the way you've been doing it and continue to suffer the same consequences that you've been suffering up to this point. The choice is yours. As for me and my house, I'm not making any more false confessions. I, I, I've been that route. I'm a child of the Most High God. Well, then act it. Then act it. Live it. Don't just confess you're a child of the Most High God. Live like a child of the Most High God. Then you are a child of the Most High God. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of the Lord. Humble, humble yourself. Oh, no, I, I can't look. I've got 30,000 people that listen to me. If I can become humble, they'll quit. So what? What are you to gain if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? There's a lot of danger out there. There's a lot of fires that are, that are burning, and they're burning hot. Be careful you don't get caught up. I'm not making any more. I haven't in a long time, but I'm here to declare, I, we're not doing that. If I'm sick, I'm going to tell you, hey, guys, I need prayer. I'm sick. Okay? If I'm destitute, I'm here to tell you, hey, guys, I'm destitute. I need help. I need prayer. I don't want money. I just need prayer. I know who can solve my problems, and your money's not going to do it if he wants me to go through this. But I want you as my brothers and my sisters to go before the Lord and say, Help him, Lord. He needs your help now. Amen. That is our job. Thank you, Carl. I do this to Bert every week, and he's probably going, oh, he, he just, I, he told me he wouldn't, and he did it anyways. Sorry, Bert. I love you. <laughs> I give him scriptures, and then I add to the scriptures. It's okay. I know he loves me. I know he really loves me. I'm not just saying that because he's Bert back there, but I know Bert loves me. So let's go to the book of Job, uh, chapter 13, real quick. If you don't have your Bibles, you should, but here you go. Get, get it on the phone. Get it wherever you got to get it, but let's go. <sighs> okay, but that's, chapter, that, that's verse 15, but I'm going to go. <laughs> But this is what happens, okay? I'm going to be verse 14. Why should I put myself in mortal danger and take my life in my own hands? You realize what he's saying there? Why should I put myself in mortal What he's saying right there is why am I making these decisions that I'm really not capable of making? Every time I make a decision, it seems to go wrong here. I mean... None of us have been through what Job has been through. Some of us have been through some, but not all. This is a man of wisdom. Did he make mistakes? Of course. We're all the same. We're all going to make mistakes. So there he goes. He's declaring that I am not making this. Who said that? King David. 
They gave him the choices. He said, I'm not making any of these three choices. I don't want to lean on, my, on man. He was talking about himself. To make this decision. Whatever the Lord decides, that is what I want it to happen. He lost a lot of people in one swift. But at least he trusted the Lord enough that he knew that was the best outcome. Even if he didn't like it. Oh, see, we want God to do it the way we like it. But that is not right for us. He's got another method. He's got another way. And his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. And we need to humble ourselves and accept his ways. This is the message, people. Get real. So after Job said that, I'm not doing that. Then verse 15. God might kill me. Notice that he says he might. He didn't say he will. He is recognizing that God has all the authority and all the power in the universe. Not money, not family, not camels, not positions in the best places. Not recognition. God. God might kill me, but I have no other hope. God will bring us to the point where we will have no other hope. Why? Why would our God do that? If you listen to the leaders nowadays, they tell you, oh, no, God won't do that. He's not that kind of God. When Jesus came, everything changed. No, it did not. God said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he's not, he's a liar. Hmm. I have no other hope. God wants us to have no other hope. That way he can work in our lives. And, Joseph, and Job said, look, that's all I got. Therefore, I'm going to argue my case with me. He's talking through his three buddies over there. They all tell him how he needs to do this, how he needs to do that. <gasps> The religious world is telling us how to do it. Job has a better way. I'm going to plead my case with him and let him tell me how to do it. If I tell you how to do something, boy, I better be awfully anointed of the Lord to speak in his behalf for you. But if I'm telling you how to do something in a broad way, like most of these people do out there in audiences, how do, how do I know what Carl's going through, what Ann is going through, what Barry's going through, what Michelle's going through? How do I know individually none of us do? But he does. He does. And he's able to speak to your heart. He's able to speak to your soul. And he's able to deliver us. <sighs> Quit taking the fake route. It just seems like it's more convenient. It's just easier. Of course it is. What, what, what did the Lord say about the two ways? One is broad. It leads where? Destruction. Destruction. And the other one is what? And it leads to where? Life. That's the one I want. That's the one I'm taking. That's the one I'm taking. And I hope you all are taking it with me. It might get crowded at times, but we're going to have to push through that crowd and just get in there. I feel what I feel, AC, and I feel with you. But we have to walk it through. See, when they came out of... When they came out of Egypt, the word of God said there was not a feeble one among them. Do you, know, do you understand how, how great that is? We can't even fathom that. That means that there was nobody limping. There was nobody in a wheelchair. That means that there was nobody coughing. There was nobody. If you see the movies, they tell you otherwise. 
I've watched that movie of Moses many, many, many times. And you see him going in the cart, and feeble. Opposite to what the Word of God says. There was not one feeble. You either choose to believe that or you don't. I choose to believe it. But see, they had to walk it out. They couldn't stay there and be blessed. We have to come out of religion to be blessed. We can stay in there. Man has polluted it. It's been polluted already. And let me tell you, it goes across all of it. I read something today and something that I normally like. And I had to fire back a question because they were declaring this is the way it is, this is the way it is, the way it is. But they were omitting certain scriptures. They were leaving it out. And I never hardly ever do this. And I said, well, I said, I agree with all the scriptures they quoted. I said, but what, what, what are we to do with this scripture, this scripture, this scripture, and this scripture? Send it back. Hope they get back to me. But I doubt it. I hope they do. I hope they do. I'm just curious. What do you do with this? Because if, you, if you're telling me this is, this is it, then this is the recipe. But what do you do with the other part? It's almost like if I'm making a cake. I'm going to go here again. Best example I know to make. And I know I've got to use flour. I know I've got to use eggs. I know I've got to use all, all the ingredients right there, but I'm going to choose not to use some of the ingredients in there. Is that cake going to taste like the one in the picture? No. They can't, if they keep poking things out of here, it's not, you're not going to have the same outcome. You will not have the same outcome. So I'll wait on the answers. And if they don't give me any answers, then I know the answer. Because <laughs> that's, that's how you identify, you know. If, if you ask somebody, are you saved? If they he hum around, they already gave you the answer. They already gave you the answer. If they he humming around, they gave you the answer already. They're not saved. Because I have not met a person that is truly saved that is not, when you ask him, their lights, their eyes light up, and their, their soul just jump right out of them. Yeah, I'm saved. If they're here humming around, oof, dangerous grounds. Okay. We'll get to this right here. I wrote some things here that I need to, I think I need to go through it, okay? Job put all his trust in the Lord. He recognized and understood that God had all the power to deliver him. However, as a man like us, we don't understand at times why things don't happen the way we think. So what are we to do? A lot of times I write, when I'm writing these things, it sounds so good, but I never bring them like this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's almost like maybe I'm writing it to myself. Well, what are we to do? The answer is in Job. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord in His love for you. When you're sick and you're in trials, when we are helpless, when we can't within ourselves get healed, what are we to do? Though He kill me, though He might, I'm still going to trust the Lord. See, I've been praying for a lot of people here, and I know you guys have, you don't have to tell me, but I know you guys have walked in that walk that they tell you, confess that you're not doing that. Confess that you're not feeling that. Migraines come to mind. All the issues come to mind. For how many years? Maybe we need to take a different route. Because we all know this, but I'm going to say it. The definition of stupidity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. 
If you've been doing it over and over and over again and your result has not changed, it's time for you to do something different. I'm going to give you something that I think you can do different. That has been there all along, but they have scratched it off. Trust the Lord. That does not mean you quit taking your medication. Don't be silly. That's not what I'm saying here. Come on. But though he may slay me, I'm going to trust him anyways. Trust the Lord and his love for you. When sickness and trials come, and we are helpless. But for God. See, we're helpless, but for God. Because God is there. When you're sick, when you're in trial, you got to remember, God is still there in the midst of your trial. We sing it, we think about it, but we don't exercise it in our faith. And it's time for us to start exercising our faith there. I know that I shouldn't feel like this, God. But I know you know that I'm feeling like this. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to myself. I'm not going to lie to my brothers and sisters. I know that I'm feeling like this. Help me through this. Let's do that instead. I'm speaking for myself as much as anybody else. I'm still dealing with blood coming out of my throat. How many months has it been? A year almost? It might be the enemy trying to slow me down. Why not? I don't care. I still trust the Lord. I'm still going to trust the Lord. I have to. And if he chooses to take me because of something like that, what am I to say? No. Can a man add another day to his life? Or a woman? No. You notice that a man can't add, but a man can surely subtract. Ain't that weird? <laughs> That's just going to show you who's in power. See, God is a God of addition and multiplication. Man, because of the fall, is subtraction and division. Two different mathematics right there that we need to think about. No one, no, no, no one can add a day to his life on their own. But God can. And if not, if God chooses not to, what are we supposed to do if he chooses not to, A.C.? Go to Daniel 3, and we're going to see what, they, what, what you to do. Daniel 3, verse 17 and 18. This is what you to do. We know the story. We know the story. I'm going to read verse 16 anyway. Here go. <laughs> because it's all so good. I love, I love the word of the Lord, and I just love getting caught up in it. There's nothing better. Okay, so Daniel 3, verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. What do they mean by that? They mean they knew they were guilty. They were being tried here. And Nebuchadnezzar was mad enough to throw him in there, although he didn't want to. But he was mad. And the Hebrew children did not lie to him. It would have been very convenient. Let me get this out. Hey, you know, God, we'll do more good. This is being said now in the churches. We'll do more good by doing this, accepting homosexuality, abortions, and on and on and on and on. We do more good because maybe we can win some of them over. You are compromising God. You're compromising the word of the Lord. You might as well accept it and deal with the consequences because you are compromising the word of the Lord. These people could have done the same thing. They could have just, hey, look, guys, it's just the three of us. We can just... How long is it going to take? 
five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe a minute. We just bow real quick, be done with this. Life as usual, because they had a good life. These three cats had a good life. That's the reason that the king was so mad at him, because man, I'm giving you guys everything you need. I never really severely punished you for anything like I did the rest of the people here. And you guys are not willing to give in to me, not compromise, not want iota? That was Nebuchadnezzar's thinking here. They said, look, he, we know what we did. There's no explanation. There's, there, 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 there's no excuses. There's no excuses. We're not making excuses. However, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, if, if, they're still, they're still looking for mercy. Don't, don't misunderstand them. They're still in the natural. They're still looking to see if the king goes, all right. They're still in the natural, just like all of us. See, a lot of times we read the scriptures, we read over certain words like that, and that's a mistake. And we think that the people of the Bible are something different than we are. When we're doing that, we're putting ourselves inferior to the love of God. That's wrong. God loves us just as much as he loved these three Jewish men. Just as much. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God who we serve is able to save us. If we if, save us, now he, they didn't say from what, but they say he's able to save us. We might burn up and die, but he is. We're not going to be. We know where we. Shoal is not our destination. Our destination is with our Father. They understood that. They were wise men. But listen to what he said. He's able to say, comma or period in some Bibles. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. That's a pretty bold statement. These guys could have compromised all day long. What's it going to take? But if you keep compromising the word, if you keep compromising your faith, if you keep changing these things, you're going to wind up with nothing. No faith in God and your faith totally in the world. These guys would not and would not compromise. Whatever, see, this is the attitude Christian people should have, no matter what. But even if it doesn't, let, we'll make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. We will never. Uncompromising. And the result was that we're thrown into the fire. I thought, I thought the leaders we have out there say that we don't ever have to go through a fire. Jesus went through the fire for us. Well, yeah, he did. He was there with them as well. But that didn't mean they didn't go in the fire. That didn't mean things weren't burning all around them, even though they weren't burned, they weren't even scorched. But you got to remember, they were just men, and they were looking at a furnace that it was seven times hotter than normal. This is the faith God is asking for his children to have. Uncompromising faith faith now in the United States nobody's gonna throw you into a well not yet anyways they're working on it they're working on taking it all away from us and I promise you this if I live long enough to see it some of the religious leaders are gonna be right in line with them oh that's another gospel that's not the one that Paul was beheaded because he would not compromise the gospel of Jesus Christ. If a man come and teach you another gospel, let him be a curse. Let me say it again. 
if anyone, whether it be angels or men, come and teach another gospel than the one, let him be a curse. That's a double cursing. What are we to do with these things? If other people after Jesus were supposed to be living in prosperity and all this other stuff that they're telling you, no sickness, no nothing at all, no nothing, what happened to Paul? Was he less than us? What happened to Peter? What happened to the man that was in jail with Paul that he said he was sick unto death, but God had mercy on him, but not on him also, but also on me, lest I have more sorrow. In other words, more sorrow. He was already in sorrow. We are supposed to walk in sorrow. He's supposed to walk in victory, brother. I'm walking in victory by recognizing where the victory is. Not because I got anything to do with it. See, you make it sound like it's by works that you get it done. And it's not by works that you get it done. Because what happens, I was talking to somebody very, very, very dear to me. What happens is that that person feels like their faith is not strong enough like it should be. Ha! Where did that come from, the devil? I'm not good enough. God loves them, but he doesn't love me. If you subscribe to that kind of thinking, yes. But I will not. And those are around me, I will not allow you to think that way. Because it's not real. God loves us all. You no know, respect to a person. Just because some of those guys have millions of dollars and you are trying to get to your next meal, that doesn't mean he loves you less. It probably means he loves you more. God forbid, he might have given up on them cats already. Maybe he knows where their heart's going and it's not going and they're not going to repent. But he says, you, Michelle, you, Diane, you, Diane, I'm working on you. I'm going to perfect myself in you. And this is the way. <laughs> Jesus had nothing. Nothing. Not even a bed. <laughs> We're supposed to walk in the prosperity. I just don't believe that God's children should walk in all destitute. Where is that here? What did he tell his disciples when he sent them out two by two? Take how much with you? Enough for, the, enough for you can stop at, at, the, at least the, uh, what is it, eight? Motel six? Have enough to do that? He take nothing with you. No money. Take your staff and go. That sounds to me like that's not a very promising way to go. You know, hey man, I need a couple thousand dollars so I can get there. No, no. That's not faith. I'm teaching a faith walk. How is he going to teach us a faith walk unless we go through stuff that it, uh, it, it needs faith to get through? How are you going to learn? How can any of us learn? Oh, you think it's a, for some people or something, then, the, then it goes back to being God of respect for a person. He likes some people more. I am convinced the other way around. I'm convinced that God loves the people who struggle more than the people. I know he loves us all the same. But in just the way I'm thinking, no, I know how much God loves us here. And I know the struggles that a lot of us individually are going through in here. I know them. You disguise them very well sometimes. I'm a hard nose. And I go, I know God loves his people. I know he does. Just like I know he loves me. I know he does. I don't have to be convinced of his love. Every time I feel like I got to be convinced of his love, all I got to do is look there. Who else would do that? No one. No one. Many teachers before, if you follow Buddha, 
Muhammad. If you read any of these characters that started religions, none of them gave themselves like the Savior did. None of them did. They had a lot of good ideas. And a lot of those ideas that they got came from the teachings of Jesus Christ. Mmm. Mmm. I was talking to a customer of mine. He's from India. Beautiful man. Lo loving man. Loving man. He's a Buddhist. Got his own shrine in the house. As a matter of fact, I got two of them. Got one bedroom completely for a shrine. When my guys went in there to work, take off your shoes. I told the boy, I said, this is one instant, we're in Rome. Do it. But you don't compromise how you feel. And they had another shrine down there in the basement. And we were in conversation. And he says, one of the most beautiful things that you should do to other people the way you want other people to do that right. to you. I smiled at him, and he, he, like, first he was like, like, oh, he got that. I said, you know who quoted that, don't you? He kind of looked at me and said, Jesus quoted that. Do unto others so you want others to do unto you. Oh. He thought it came from the teachings of Buddha. No. No. Buddha came after Jesus. And he took me out to eat lunch. He said, I want to invite you to lunch. I want you to, have you ever eaten, eaten Indian food? I said, no. And I went never again, but besides the point. <laughs> we went out to eat. And I said, I said, I told the man, I said, you're going to have to teach me what everything is because I have no clue. It's not like I could tell. You know, they, a lot of spices, a lot of stuff, and and uh, so he said, okay, no problem. And he, he's been very, 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 very kind to me and my man. Because he really believed, and this is, the, this is the damning part to me. So we prepare our plates. Re really after the appetizers, I was done. But, you know, he insisted on more food. And uh, when we put the place and we sit down on the table. I wore a, I wore a hat. I said, uh, I told him, I said, Anil, I said, uh, I'm going to pray for my, over my food. Oh, okay, sure. And I just took my hat off and I prayed aloud. Lord, thank you for the food. Thank you for those who prepared it. Bless the food, Father, so it will be nourishing for us. Let our bodies re receive it well. May we do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ. He closed his eyes. I don't know if he prayed with me or not, but he was totally fine. And then after that, see, we must make the most out of every opportunity right. to sow that seed. That's what we do. I am not here to tell him he's wrong and I'm right. God didn't tell me to do that. God just told me, you go and you be who you are. Who I made you to be. That's what you do. You're not here to convince that man to leave his. That'll come, Lord willing. Lord willing. He's a very kind man. I love to see him fall in love with Jesus. Great potential. He gave my guys a bonus after they finished the job. An exuberant bonus. I, I've never even heard of one like that. And one of my guys, because he's not used to getting bonus like that, <laughs> one of my guys said, why are you doing this? He says, one word. He says, love. In the Christian community, and I work in a many called Christian houses, there is no bonus. There's hardly ever cold water when it's 100 degrees outside. Shame on us. Shame on us. That's the reason people flock to those religions because they see people not only saying it, 
doing it. We need to quit saying it and start doing it. I can see where I could have been converted if I didn't know Jesus. Man, this guy's for real. He ain't, he ain't no face. See, everybody's looking for real. And they've been finding it in the church of the living God that everybody is fake. Everybody out for themselves. Everybody wants to enrich themselves. It's sickening. Truly sickening. Okay, so I read Daniel, so here you go. The God who we serve, they didn't compromise their, their faith. They could have, but being committed to God was far more important, as it should be. Being committed to God is more important. Now, in a saying that, I'm going to tell you something. There is strength in numbers. Am I right or am I wrong? And I'm not wanting anybody to feel convicted here, but I want people to understand the truth. The scriptures tell you, now if you're going to go visit somebody, if you're on vacation, if you don't feel good, what, that's, that's, I'm not talking about that instances. I'm talking about forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some have. Hebrews 10, 25. Do not ignore it because the Lord might be doing something in the midst that you need to be a part of it might be for your good but it might be for somebody else's good but the Lord might be doing something and you need to be we can't pick and choose hmm. I want to read a quote from Spurgeon that I liked and this is a small one he's very eloquently as always it is ours to do right and leave the results to the Lord what do you how do you argue with that one in other words if you're doing right don't worry about the results because he's the one that's in charge of the results but see we take it upon ourselves I want this result God all right, let's go to another scripture here real quick. Oh, my goodness. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 10, but I want to read a couple of things here. Why have we moved away from their faith and think, and think that we are greater, although we have some kind of power or knowledge higher than the rest? Why have we done that? And that's what the church has done. Why do the false leaders make us feel like we don't have enough faith when we're going through struggles? They tell us to confess that we're not sick, that we don't feel the sickness, and we already went through that one time. Do we think, let me ask you this, do we think that by us being arrogant to God is going to make God change his mind? I'm going to walk by faith. I, heard, I saw a preacher do this on TV. I'm sick. <coughs> I'm not sick. <coughs> I'm not sick. <coughs> I'm not sick. And he kept doing He kept walking. And then he got to the end. He came back and he was like, and this is a well-known guy, so I'm not going to say his name. And the next thing you know, I'm going like, man, I'm not sick. I'm good. I'm going, maybe now. But not when you were over there. Am I right or am I wrong here? You're lying to yourself. And God will not have that. Why not, throw, why not throw ourselves at the mercies of God? What could you possibly lose? Tell me that. What can you possibly lose? Nothing that shouldn't be lost. I put it to you that way. Nothing that should, should have ever had to begin with. I don't know, but I think sometimes we're so arrogant. And I wrote down here, be honest with him, yourself, and each other. Perhaps we can turn this, this thing around into real faith like our true leaders. David, Job, Paul, Peter, James, John. True leaders. True leaders. 
All these other people may have a huge following, but they're not true leaders. To me, I am not a true leader. Let me get that out there. So you don't think, you know, he's putting himself up there with, with Jesus. No, I am not. God forbid. These are the true leaders here. These are the, they're no different than us. They're not more beloved than us. But they're the ones God chose for leading, like he did Moses. He had a whole nation of Israel, but he chose Moses. And he didn't choose Aaron, Moses' older brother. No. He chose Moses. And Moses had to be. Those are the true leaders. You need to follow them. I'm following them. I'm taking notes. I want to hear when Moses speaks. I want to hear when David speaks. I want to hear when Paul speaks. I want to hear most of all when Jesus speaks. Because see, Jesus speaks through all of them. See, we forget that this whole thing is written by him. By God the Father, by God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The whole thing. From Genesis to Revelation. All man did was this right here. Just like my notes. That's all that man did. Notes. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Nothing in this Bible is here by mistake. Nothing. Nothing is a chance. And God did not need to fill pages. War and peace fill pages. That's the reason most people don't get through it. You can get through this. All right, so 2 Corinthians. This is for the people who say that, oh, God doesn't want us to go through anything. Well, then, then explain to me this scripture right here. We're going to start in verse 8. We all know the scriptures. We all know the scriptures. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. The thorn in the flesh he's talking about. Wait a minute. Paul said that all these people tell you, you name it, you claim it. You don't even drop it. Well, what do you do with that one right there? He begged, he begged the Lord. He didn't just, hey, Lord, you know. He was in begging mode here. He begged the Lord three times. Not once. Three times. Take it away from me. That can be temptations. That can be desires. His thorn in the flesh was his. We all have our own. That can be bad habits. It can be drugs. It can be alcohol. It can be, you name it, it can be anything. Three different times he begged the Lord. And what did the Lord tell him? Buckle up, Paul. Well, then, then I, I, I don't understand because what they're teaching out there is totally different than that. He told them, hey, my grace is sufficient, so learn to accept my grace. That's really what he's saying here. Learn to walk in my grace. No matter what's going on in your life, learn to accept my will for you in grace. My grace, it'll be sufficient. When I decide it's over, then it's over. You saying it's over does not make it over. It's over when I say it's over. See, men have quoted that. The man is wrong. God is the one that decides when things are over. I beg God for Anna not to have those migraines. Sure have, Anna, whether you believe it or not. It don't matter. It matters not. I know you do. But, I mean, I have. And other things. But I have to trust the Lord like Job did. Three times. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power was best where? At weakness. Oh, I'm not supposed to show weakness. But then you're not showing any power either. Because he clearly said, my, your, his power, God's power works best than us when we're weak. Right. 
I'm a man. I ain't supposed to show no weakness. Buddy, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Grow up. Be a Christian. Quit being a man. Start being a Christian. Lose that macho title. You don't need it. Way overrated. So now, I don't know what they do with the scripture right here. I guess they just don't read it or don't want to quote it. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses. Uh oh, now he's bragging about being weak. Huh. So that the power of Christ, not of man, the power of Christ. Woo! Man, that's glorious right there. Who does not want that? I want it. I want it. I want it now. Oh, my God. So that the power of Christ can work through me. What power was that? Was the power to help and to love and to care. Paul was a man that at one point he had many, many, many pride issues. He had to learn that when he's weak, the power of Christ comes alive. This is what I'm telling you right now. When you feel weak, rejoice. Because the power of Christ is getting ready to dominate everything that you are. Embrace it. Embrace it. The power of God is getting ready to deliver people here, now. Embrace it. Hallelujah. That's why I take pleasure <laughs> in my weaknesses. Man, he, he went from what to I'm in pleasure. Now, I don't know how anybody can be in pleasure when they're sick. Well, evidently there's a way. You trust in God. That's the way. You trust in God. That no matter what the outcome is, if he called you to go home this evening because of your illness, what did you lose? You're in the presence of the Most High God. What did you lose if you're safe? If you're a born again child of God, well, you say, well, you know what? You might take me. He might take me early. There's a reason for that. Rejoice. It's never early when it's time. I don't know what they do with these scriptures. That's why I pleasure in my weaknesses. And guess what? This is, the, this is the other thing that they don't teach you. The other things. You're not supposed to be going through none of this, brother. You're, you're, you're a child of God. That's the reason I said they start acting like it and start reading what it says and doing it. Weaknesses, insults, hardship, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for what? For Christ. Not that I suffer because I want to do drugs. Not that I suffer because I want to steal. Not that, not, no, those are not sufferings for Christ. Let's get that out there. Paul was not talking about that kind of suffering. He was talking about the suffering of the cross. Losing your identity and becoming one with Jesus. That's what those people were suffering for. We got a lot of people in jail, and I'm, I don't have anything against jail ministry, and a lot of people try to make others feel guilty if you don't join them in the jail ministry. Well, you, when was it you in jail and, and you never visited me? He's not talking about the people who are doing it for the wrong thing. He's talking about his people. I was in jail. In other words, I was a Christian. I was persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm in jail. And in the United States, that doesn't happen. But I go abroad and it's there. And there's beheadings. And there's torture. And there's all, all, all sorts of things. That's a real jail ministry. I'm not saying nothing. there's anything wrong with going to try to witness to these people here that are lost. I'm not saying that. 
But Jesus was talking about when I was in jail. Now when Jesus, Jesus wasn't in jail because of things that he desired to do. So remember, it's the troubles that I suffer for the cause of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm going to finish it up with this right here. The last scripture, go ahead and put it up there. I'm, I'm going to leave it there because, but I'm going to put the last scripture there because this is, this is what we should be doing. Right here. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Praise team if you want to come up. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to encourage each other and build each other up. That's what we're supposed to do. When somebody is hurting, we're not supposed to ignore the person. I hope it gets better, sister, brother. Uh, we're supposed to encourage each other. We're supposed to put our arms around them. We're supposed to care. We're supposed to love. Encourage each other and build because when you're doing that, when you're encouraging that individual, you're building them up in the faith. And he's, in First Thessalonians, Paul must have seen that action in the Thessalonian church because it's just as you're doing. So he saw that at the church. So keep doing this. This, this I see it. I'm witnessing it. And this is good. You guys need to continue to do that. And I think we're doing that in here somewhat. I like to see it more. I like to see it more. But I think we're doing that somewhat. We're encouraging each other. God has always had a people that were not going to follow the crowds. For the most part, what I've witnessed in my lifetime is that most of the crowds are wrong. And only a select few follow the course. That I witnessed in my lifetime. You say that because you're a small church. I've seen smaller. I've been in smaller. But you know what? Those people dedicated their lives to. And that's what really matters how this is with him it's not how this is with him it's an individual choice you must desire Jesus like Joseph did you must desire to be in his presence you must desire to be one with him and that can only come through surrender total surrender so if you have anything you want to bring to the Lord, bring it. I really thought this message was going to be shorter, and I apologize for that. But then I apologize every week. So my apologies are not very good. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Love you also. Uh, if you have anything that you need to bring to the Lord, bring it. We'll pray with you. If you want, some, if you want to just come over here and pray in the altar there, that whatever we call that. Go ahead and pray. And if you do not know the Lord, come. We'll make the introduction. Hallelujah. The rest is up to you.